Hello Antwerps, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Uh, today in my Windows 10 Wrangling playlist, I'm going to show you how to install Windows 10 as a clean install on either a wiped computer or a new computer. Um, so to do this, you will need a Windows 10 flash drive. I show you how to make one of these in another video, so check the playlist and you'll be able to see how to make one of these yourself. All you need is a blank flash drive to do it. It's a free download from Microsoft. So I'll plug this into the computer. I'll turn it on and I'll just explain a couple more details while we wait for that to start up. So because the computer I'm installing on is blank and doesn't have anything on it, it will start booting up from the Windows 10 flash drive by default because there's nowhere else for it to start from. I strongly recommend making sure you disconnect all other drives other than the drive you want to install Windows on because the Windows installer historically has always had a nasty habit of putting data on other drives during install and I've never figured out any rhyme or reason why. So just uninstall anything that you do not want to have Windows on. It just makes things nice and simple on the install. If you have an old install of Windows 10 on the computer, or you have an old Windows install for seven or eight or something like that, you may need to change your boot order. So on a desktop computer, you normally do that by tapping the delete key on your keyboard to get into BIOS and then find the boot order options. Or on a laptop, it's normally the F2 key. I can't give you specifics on this because the exact method for changing the boot order varies between almost every different laptop and motherboard. So it's really hard to give you specific instructions there. However, delete for a desktop or F2 for a laptop will usually get you into the BIOS so you can start finding the boot settings yourself. Um, failing that, Google search for the make and model of your computer and change boot order and someone somewhere will have given instructions for your particular machine. So we've landed on this page here um, on the installation screen. So what I'll do is I'll uh, leave everything at the default here. So as you can see, because I'm in the UK, we've just got English United Kingdom. Um, so it's quite common for Windows to install as English US in most conditions. So if it does that, don't worry about it. You can change that anytime you want after the install. So let's just hit next. So uh, now I'm going to click install now. Um, if I were doing repairs or I needed to do some other troubleshooting, you can also do repair your computer to get into a recovery environment. So this is another really handy thing. Of, this is why I say to people, make a Windows 10 flash drive, because it means that you can instantly get your computer into a recovery environment if you're having problems. But we don't want that right now. So we'll install now. Okay, so at this point, it's asking us for a product key. Now, I always say I don't have a product key at this stage. Even if you do have a legitimate Windows 10 license, just say I don't have a product key and deal with that later. It's a lot easier to deal with Windows 10 licensing once you've already installed Windows and you don't need the product key to actually install it. So just say I don't have a product key and we'll skip past this. Now, because we've said we don't have a product key, we actually need to declare what version of Windows we want to install. Nine times out of 10, you're gonna just want Windows 10 Home, just the top option. Um, if you specifically know you've got a Windows 10 Pro license, you can select Pro. Um, these other ones like Home N and Single Language and Education, uh, these are very specific licensing versions and you don't wanna to touch those unless you actually know that you need it. So really, you're going to want either Home or Pro, depending on what you've purchased. Bear in mind that Home and Pro are functionally identical. If you're not connecting to a business network, to a Windows Server domain, there is no difference between them. There's no performance difference. There's no feature difference. So Home is fine for all personal computers. So let's select that and click Next. And I'll accept the license terms and click Next. And I'm going to select Custom Install. Upgrade is supposed to be an option for doing an inline upgrade. However, in my experience with all versions of Windows, it never works. So I'm not quite sure exactly why it's there. However, uh, Custom Install is always the way forward. So select Custom. Now it's going to ask us where we want to install Windows. So as you can see, I've got a brand new SSD here that is brand new out of the box. There's nothing on it. It's not even formatted or partitioned. And there's no other drives present because I've disconnected all of them. So 
Um, if you want to, you can hit new and make your own partitions. However, I recommend just clicking next at this point and Windows Setup will automatically make the required partitions it needs. So for now, I'm just going to hit next and skip past this. And so it'll now make its own system partitions and format them to exactly what they need to be. And now we're onto the installation screen. So depending on the speed of your computer and um, depends on how long this will take. Uh, we're installing off of a flash drive onto an SSD, so I'm expecting about 5 or 10 minutes tops. It might even be faster if you have a decent USB 3 flash drive. However, I'm currently on USB 2, so I'm going to walk away for 5 minutes while it goes through this screen. And I'll see you after the cut. All right, that was nice and quick. So one reboot later and we've landed on the first run wizard. So uh, this is going to run us through a lot of really basic stuff. So we're just going to follow the on-screen instructions. So uh, yeah, I'm in the United Kingdom. So um, oh, just as an FYI, uh, I've got a yes button behind my face there. So I'm clicking on yes, proceed to the next screen. And yeah, I'm using a UK keyboard. And I'm going to hit skip because I don't want to add a second keyboard layout. Now at this point I have a choice as to whether I want to log in with a local user account or a Microsoft account. Local user accounts require less upfront information, however Microsoft user accounts allow for lots more comfy added extras like Windows Hello Login for PIN account logins or facial recognition or thumbprint or all kinds of other biometrics. Um, and also logging in with a Microsoft account also automatically logs you into all other Microsoft services like the store, OneDrive and so on and so forth. So it, it's very useful to do that. However, if you absolutely don't want to log in with a Microsoft account, make sure that your Ethernet cable is unplugged before you install Windows. Otherwise, it won't allow you to not use a Microsoft account. So uh, in this case, we're not connected. So I'm going to select I don't have Internet. And this will skip me straight to uh, this screen. I'll say continue with a limited setup. So this will skip me to making a local user account as opposed to asking for an email address. So I'm just going to put in user for my local user account. And I'll set no password just because this is a demo setup. So again, if you if you absolutely want to use a local user account, make sure you're disconnected from the internet when you install. Otherwise, you won't have the choice to do that. So now we've got to go through all the other setup preferences. So this is basically asking us if we want to enable all the other sort of Windows 10 perks, which we may or may not want. Generally speaking, I prefer not to use any of these. And we can switch all of them or any of them on at a later date. So if in doubt, I just start saying no to every question that comes up. So I don't want to synchronize my activity history between this computer and other computers. So no. And I don't want to let Cortana have a, uh, further access to data for improved response. Uh, Cortana is the Microsoft Digital Assistant. No one really uses Cortana. If you like Cortana and you want Cortana to be useful and have access to your calendar and things like that, you'll want to accept this. However, if you don't use Cortana, then you want to say decline, which is what I'm going to do. 
So now it's going to ask us, uh, do we want to use speech recognition? Um, so again, allowing online speech recognition will drastically increase how good Cortana is at recognizing voice commands. Once again, I don't use Cortana, so I'm going to say no to this. So I'll say don't use, accept. Uh, location. So obviously location usage, this can be handy if you're using mapping apps or weather apps and things like that. I don't use any of those. So once again, I'm going to leave location services switched off. On my laptop, I have location services turned on. So if I lose my laptop, I can use my Microsoft account to find where my laptop was last seen connected to the internet. But again, if it's a desktop computer or you don't want this for privacy reasons, you just say no. So nope, no, no location services. Find my device. So no, I don't want to turn that on on this computer. We'll leave that off as well. So diagnostic data. Uh, more diagnostic data allows Microsoft to uh, better solve problems when they when they come across them. I don't I don't opt into this stuff myself. Microsoft can figure this stuff out. So I'm only going to send basic stuff because it reduces the amount of telemetry that the computer will be sending to Microsoft. Um, and again, this isn't out of privacy concerns. It's just less stuff that the computer is doing in the background. So I'm going to set that to basic and accept. Uh, so inking and typing. Um, if you're using a touch input like a, um, uh, a graphics tablet or something like that, then uh, using this can help make inking and typing better. However, once again, I'm only I'm not using any of this, so I'm going to say no. Tailored experiences with diagnostic data. So again, this helps Microsoft uh, give you more hints and tips that might be relevant to what you're doing. Um, I don't need this personally, and I don't know anyone who does. So once again, I'm going to say no, not interested in that. And advertising stuff. So do you want targeted adverts or not? I, or I almost never see adverts in Windows 10. Um, the only time they appear is sometimes in like suggested apps and things like that. So if you have targeted advertising turned on, they might suggest an app that is actually relevant to you, like a similar game to another game that you play. However, again, it's not something I use. So I have targeted advertising switched off. This doesn't remove any adverts, but it just means they're selected at random or from features instead of based on what I'm doing on the computer. So again, tinfoil hat, I'm going to leave that turned off. And that's it. We're now through the first run wizard and we get this welcome screen. So we've just got to go through this and then we should land on the desktop. Okay, so we've now hit the desktop. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to the internet. So you can either connect to Wi-Fi now using the Wi-Fi um, button in the bottom right or I'm going to plug in an Ethernet cable. And I'm just showing this bit because it's relevant to our local user account that we've made. So now we've connected. Um, I'm going to leave network services turned off because I'm not going to use them on this particular computer. And sod's law, it's not going to do it. Now, usually when you connect to the internet after doing the first install, it will throw up a prompt message saying, oh, now you're connected to the internet. Let's finish setting up. And it will once again try and encourage you to sign in with a Microsoft account. Um, as luck would have it on this demo setup, it's not doing it. However, if it does pop up, once again, you say, sure, let's finish setting up. And then in the bottom left of the screen, there'll be an option saying, do this later. And once you click do this later, it'll never ask you to do it again. Um, so yeah, um, that may pop up. So at this point, now we're on the desktop, the only thing that's left to do is to go to start, settings, then scroll to the bottom and click update and security. And then basically cycle it through Windows updates, just hit check for updates, install any updates it finds, reboot, check for updates again, and rinse and repeat until you're up to date. So this first one, it's probably fine quite a lot. Here we go, it's flashing now where it's installing win, um, graphics drivers. So you may get a couple of flashes and it'll do various things and now it's installing all of the drivers. Once it's gone through this first big update, that'll be the worst of it out of the way. Um, but as I say, it's worth checking two or three times just to make sure everything is done. And after that, you're then finished. And that more or less concludes the install, the basic install of Windows 10. So that's it for this video. So I hope that was all helpful. And if you have any questions about it, then smash them in the comments down below. In the next video, I'm going to continue this setup and show you what I refer to as my comfy setup, 
which is basically how I would then move forward from here to configure Windows 10 in a way that I think is nice and easy to understand and well presented to any standard user. So this is simple stuff like, you know, icon setup, page file setups, that kind of thing. It's completely optional, but if you were if you're completely new to Windows 10 and you just want to see a simple setup that just hides away the nonsense and brings forward the useful stuff, then check that video out. Past that, thank you very much for watching everyone and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.